Six voters have just one hour left to make their picks in the high stakes elections in Virginia. I'm Leslie Foster. I'm Lorenzo Hall. Polls close at seven o'clock tonight, but anyone still standing in line at that point will be allowed to cast their ballot. That's right. So let's talk about why this matters. While votes won't be sending or voters won't be sending anyone to the Capitol Hill or to the White House, every single one of those 140 seats in the state legislature are up for grabs. Now that's a big deal because check out the razor thin balance of power in the state Senate. 22 seats are held by Democrats, 17 by Republicans. There's one vacant seat, which is in a heavily Democrat leaning district. So essentially, Republicans will have to pick up three seats to take control of the chamber. Yes, yeah, similar situation playing out in the Virginia House of Delegates. Republicans hold a very slim majority there too. 48 seats to the Democrats, 46 uh, 46, excuse me, for Democrats and 48 for Republicans, and six seats are currently vacant. So this election will dictate whether Governor Glenn Youngkin has the control he needs to push his conservative agenda forward. We've got live team coverage tonight. Our Katie Lusso is at one of the busiest polling places in Loudoun County. Yeah, our Matthew Torres starts us off, though, in Henrico County tonight, where the governor just met with some voters. And Matthew, the governor, we understand, had a lot to say there, especially about abortion rights in the Commonwealth, right? So he did because we are asking questions about this topic during his rallies and campaigns leading up to Election Day. He has not brought up abortion as an issue, even though we know this is weighing on many voters' minds. We are here in Enrico County for his last stop greeting voters right before polls closed. And one common message that we have heard from him throughout the day is that Virginia needs to go back to a, quote, common sense approach, whether that is providing parents more of a voice in their child's education or boosting support for law enforcement to reduce crime. We have been following him since his first stop in Loudoun County today as he's urging people to vote Republican. Some of his legislation the past two years have been stalled by Democrats. He's big on the economy and blames Democrats for inflation. He wants schools to notify parents about how their child wants to be identified. And he wants that 15-week abortion ban with a few exceptions. He says that is a compromise. But will that be enough to sway the moderate, voter, moderate voters? This is what he said just after greeting voters in Enrico County. I think we can come together around a reasonable approach to abortion. The other side has constantly wanted to extend abortion all the way up through and including birth. Everyone remembers the former governor's comments about keeping a baby comfortable while you decide whether the child lives or dies. I mean, that was so out of bounds for Virginians. And so we can come together around this most difficult topic and I think Virginians can support where we are to protect life at 15 weeks with full exceptions in the case of rape and incest and, and when a mother's life is at risk. And, and we also recognize that's when a baby can feel pain. I think this is a place we can come together as opposed to divide us. And Democrats have been saying, even though it's a 15 week abortion ban, a ban is a ban, and they feel this issue will help them win the races. We are told that Yunkin is going to be in Richmond tonight to watch the election results coming in. And one of the races he likely will be paying attention to is the one in Loudoun County between Republican nominee Juan Pablo Segura and his Democratic opponent, Russet Perry. Continuing our coverage tonight is my colleague Katie Lusso in Loudoun County as voters are putting in their opinions about this race. Katie. Yeah, and Matthew, I think we're hearing a lot of what you're hearing, that people want to get out there and cast their vote. They're concerned about the same issues you just mentioned, abortion rights. They're concerned about different policies, and they really just want to get out here and have their voice heard. Now, I just checked in with the chief election officer. He said they are up to 820 people coming out here to cast their vote. That's up more than 100 people since we checked in with him just about an hour ago. So a lot of people out here, they want to have their voices heard. And as you mentioned, one of the big races right now is the Senate District. 31 and the two candidates, as you mentioned, are Republican candidate Juan Pablo Segura, a businessman and political newcomer. And then on the Democratic ticket, you have former Loudoun County prosecutor Russet Perry. The outcome of this race could have a major impact on abortion rights, taxes and education policies. And speaking of education, if you're interested in school policies about transgender children, books available to your kids and what your kids learn about when it comes to American history, voting in the school board election is your chance to make sure your voice counts. The Loudoun County School Board is going to look a lot different after tonight. The school board includes eight seats tied to different districts with one at large seat of the nine city members, only two are seeking re-election. So that means there are seven guaranteed newcomers who will be decided tonight. The school board and the district have come under fire for the way they handle two sexual assaults on school property. 
Well, tonight we asked voters here what issues they're most focused on as they cast their votes tonight. What are the biggest issues on this ballot? What are the biggest issues you're hoping candidates can solve for you? The school system, um, because as a parent, we, we are taking care of our mental health for our kids. And that's the most important for me right now. Well, Roe versus Wade, so I'm voting for whoever's going to be on my side. So we are just seeing a continuous stream of people. They want to have their voice heard. They've been sharing their thoughts, their issues, their concerns and all of this. And I spoke to the chief election officer earlier. He said earlier when it was only 700 people again, it's now more than 800. He said it already felt like one of the highest turnouts he's seen, and he's been doing this for 20 years. So a lot of people are casting their vote tonight in Leesburg. I'm Katie Lasso WUSA 9. I have to say it's encouraging to see these local races impact every facet of your life. And so for folks who believe in and their civic right to vote and the importance of it. It's good to see all of them coming out tonight and you can vote until seven o'clock mm -hmm. tonight out there too. So thank you, Katie. All right, we're also keeping an eye on local elections in Bowie, Gaithersburg, Greenbelt, Laurel and Rockville, Maryland. Voters there are electing new city council members. Now, besides creating and reviewing laws, their responsibilities include oversight of multiple agencies, commissions, boards and other aspects of local government. Now, Bowie, Laurel and Rockville are also voting on a new mayor. Rockville has two advisory questions on the ballot, too. Those questions are about term limits for city leadership, lowering the voting age in city elections and allowing non-U.S. citizen residents the chance to vote. By the way, poll Polls close at 8 o'clock tonight. Stay with us right here on air and online as the results come in this evening, including an election special after the polls close. That's on WUSA 9 Plus at 9 p.m. Also streaming right now on WUSA 9 Plus. Check out our election 2023 special. You'll learn more on what's at stake in Virginia and the potential ripple effects across the nation.